welcome to the Beast Rider Podcast. I am your host, Ryan Sakamoto, and today we're going to be discussing, once again, the future of San Francisco 49ers quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo. So let's get started. If you haven't heard the news by now, Jimmy Garoppolo was praised by his coach, Kyle Shanahan, as Shanahan had this to say about his starting quarterback. I expect Jimmy to be our starter next year. I mean, I expect him to come and play with us this year. We have six games left. We are not out of the playoffs yet. That's from Kyle Shanahan. Let me repeat that. I expect Jimmy to be our starter next year. I mean, I expect him to come and play with us this year. We have six games left. We are not out of the playoffs yet. Well, strong words from Kyle Shanahan. Considering everyone else in the media thinks that, well not everyone else, but can't speak for everyone else, but I'm going to speak for myself, that I don't think that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be the starting quarterback next year for the San Francisco 49ers. And if he is the starting quarterback of the 49ers, that's just a short-term gap for the future quarterback that the 49ers are going to be drafting. Yes, I said it. If you look at my description, I included all my podcasts that are related to this one that are relatable. I included that in the description below. Read up on that podcast on who will be Jimmy Garoppolo's eventual successor. I think you will find that very informative and useful and of use. So go ahead and check that out. But getting back to Jimmy Garoppolo and what Kyle Shanahan said about Jimmy Garoppolo, I just don't see it happening. And here's a number of reasons why. You can expect him all you want to be here quarterback of next year. That's fine. I expect a lot of things too. Expectations today are not the same as expectations tomorrow. The roster today, yeah, you expect Jimmy Garoppolo to be the starter because who do you have in line? Nobody. So let's keep it real. They're going to be drafting the quarterback next year in next year's draft. And if they don't draft a quarterback in next year's draft, then you're doing yourself a disservice because, let's face it, Kyle Shanahan is so frustrated with Jimmy Garoppolo. He makes the same errors. He doesn't live to play another down. Makes ill-advised throws in double coverage. Is a one-read quarterback. Doesn't go through his progressions. Doesn't scan the field to the other side. These are the same mistakes that has lingered with Jimmy Garoppolo since his arrival in San Francisco. It's becoming a habit and a bad one at that. And so I think Kyle Shanahan has seen enough. And yeah, he may say and name him the starter right now. But again, what are you comparing it to in present day? Because the draft has yet to come. And until you have somebody who will actually challenge Jimmy Garoppolo for that starting role, of course he's going to say that Jimmy Garoppolo is expected to be the starter. It's common sense. All right, moving on. I don't see Jimmy Garoppolo staying in San Francisco for a number of reasons. Again, if you look at my description in this podcast, I've included relatable podcasts to why I'm going to be talking about my analysis on this podcast. So it ties everything in together and everything comes full circle. All right. Let's start with Fred Warner, my man, who I said was due a front-loaded contract simply because he's getting paid mes- uh, less than $1 million annually compared to Bobby Wagner, who gets paid $18 million annually. It makes no sense. Fred Warner was the best middle linebacker dating back to last year. He was a first-team All-Pro snub last year and now playing out a first-team All-Pro this year and better than Bobby Wagner, which, by the way, I don't know how Bobby Wagner graded out by Pro Football Focus as a first-team All-Pro because he is a horrible underneath curl hook defender. I have the analytics to back it up. And I will challenge PFF if they come at me and say, well, no, he's not because I have game film and I have my own analytics as an underneath defender and he is not looking pretty, I tell you that. Not worthy of a first-team All-Pro honor at all. But getting back to Fred Warner, he's due a front-loaded contract. If you do the math from 18 million minus 1 million over the course of two years, you're saving yourself 17 million dollars. 17 times 2 comes out to 34 million dollars. An overdue money that Warner needs to get compensated for it. And he's playing on a rookie deal. Anybody who plays on a rookie deal knows your second contract is where you make the most of the money because there's a lot of guarantees involved. And odds are in that third contract, you're basically in the twilight of tour toward the end of your career. Right? 
Let's face it, DeForest Buckner outplayed his rookie contract. Hence, he got a front-loaded deal. Eric Armstead didn't outplay his rookie contract, but had one good year. Result? A back-loaded contract. Fred Warner outplaying his rookie contract, so he's due what? A front-loaded contract. Fred Warner is about to become an unrestricted free agent after next year. Typically, what GMs like to do, as I stated in my description in the po- earlier podcast below, is you want to extend the player the year prior to his final year of his rookie deal, so that way you're not competing with the other 31 NFL teams and vying for his services at the end of the year. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but because you don't, people don't watch my podcast and they want to challenge me on the podcast, even though not, if they're not watching your podcast, I have to repeat myself. And it's just good for me because I like talking about myself or talking to myself, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Watch my podcast. All joking aside, please watch my podcast before challenging me or critiquing my work or my predictions and analysis. It'll make you a smarter man for doing so. And that way we can actually have a real debate because you have to watch my podcast in order to have a debate. Without watching my podcast, you can't have an opinion because you've never watched my podcast. All right. Anyways. So yeah, that's where I stand with that. Jimmy Garoppolo, I don't see coming back, although that Kyle Shanahan today said otherwise. Breaking news, guys! It's all over the internet. Go to ESPN's front page. Go to NFL.com. They're all saying, Shanahan said, Jimmy's our guy. He's expected to be our starter next year. Those are headlines, and that's why you're looking at this YouTube podcast, because the headlines today trumps everything else. But in the end, is it really a headline? Not so much, because Shanahan, what he's doing is he's trying to elevate Jimmy Garoppolo's stock because he has zero dead money tied to his contract at the end of the season, and he has a cap hit of $24.1 million. And when you have a player who's due that much money, and you have 25-plus unrestricted free agents coming up, along with Fred Warner, who's the best middle linebacker in the NFL, you're going to need to kind of compensate for those players and how do you do that well you have to wipe your cl- your hands clean of others and Jimmy Garoppolo seems to be a logical cap casualty not in a release but probably a cap casualty in terms of a trade because Jimmy Garoppolo has value and it's just whether or not another team is willing to fork out 24.1 million dollars and can absorb that cap hit for his salary all right, because Jimmy Garoppolo is a starting quarterback. Is he a top 15 quarterback? I put him right there in the 15 to 20 range. But is he a top 10 quarterback? No, he is not. And the foreigners would do a disservice by just wiping their hands clean and releasing him because they see value and know that a lot of teams need quarterbacks. And Jimmy Garoppolo, you can win with him. We've proven that. And again, I put another podcast playlist in the description below on that and which AFC teams would buy for his services. So please go ahead and watch my podcast. I have a podcast playlist at the end of every Beast Rider podcast episode so you can scroll through my podcast and keep up on my YouTube receipts on what I said and my predictions and analysis and see if I'm spot on or not spot on, but more times than not, I'm spot on. And that way it's all there for you. Everything's on the internet. I cannot lie. I cannot say I didn't say that or I did say that, but everything's in the Beast Rider podcast. Okay, well, thank you for tuning in. I hope you had what I'd like to offer if you did. Please hit the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner of the screen. There's also a thumbs up that I included. So if you click on that in the duration of the, any of my podcast episodes, you will be able to subscribe in real time. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night. Beast Rider out.